Nebraska, Colorado. You and I have a unique perspective about this game. You've seen Colorado practice, and you've seen Colorado play. I've seen Nebraska practice, and I was part of this rivalry for nine straight years. We've both been head coaches, and we knew we had to do certain things before we ever played a game. Let's talk about some of those things. Yeah, when I was when I got a, my her, first head coaching job, I had some great mentors, Lou Holtz and Earl Bruce, and they made it very clear that before you get to calling plays, picking the defenses, uh, what color uniforms you're going to wear, you have to do two things to get the team organized. And number one is to spend all your time on this early in your right. career as a head coach. Number one is develop and imp implement a culture. That's your culture. It can't be anyone else's. It has to be yours. You develop, you implement it. And when I went to visit Coach Prime, I've known him a long time. And the one thing that was perfectly clear when I went to Boulder, Colorado about three weeks ago, I walked on that practice field having no idea what to expect. You know what I saw? Effort and discipline. And it was all over the field. His assistant coaches, his players, it was very clear what he expected. A matter of fact, when he talked about effort, I saw him stop practice and go after a player and go after coaches because it wasn't the effort that he demanded. Right. He demanded. It was his culture. Number two is talent acquisition. And that's roster, but it's also coaching staff. This is unprecedented times, Jerry, when you look at what's going on in college football. The normal transition of roster used to be about 14 to 22, right. 23. Right. You know, you have your seniors graduate, new class comes in, maybe a transfer to, sometimes none. Colorado has 87 new, not, not transfers, 87 new. That's transfers plus freshmen. I didn't realize this. Nebraska's yeah. number one in the Big Ten was 62. So they have done a complete transformation, and then finally staff. One of the most impressive things I saw at Colorado, he's hired veteran coaches. Coach Kelly, his defense coordinator, was at Alabama the last three to four years, very experienced coach. His offense coordinator was the head coach of Kent State, Sean Lewis. I've been in great contact with Sean Lewis since I left. I think he's an excellent coach. This was all on display last week in Fort Worth, and they did a great job. I can speak on behalf of Coach Prime because I witnessed it. I'm anxious to see what Nebraska and Coach Rule are going to do next. Well, I can tell you, I think we're going to see two coaches that have a lot of the same philosophy. I, I've seen Matt Rule practice, and I, I'd say he's is invested in those two issues as Prime or any other coach. Let's go back to this for a minute. These 62 players, as Nebraska lost that game at the end against Minnesota, the fans said, oh, no, not again. Those 62 players... They've only lost one close game, and it was because of turnovers. It wasn't because of, of anything else. Let me ask you this. This is, all, this is new in college football. How, how, do you, how do you teach these two guys about the rivalry? They didn't, they didn't grow up. How much time would you spend if you were coaching one of these teams talking about this renewal? I don't, I don't think I'd spend any time right now. That's To them, that's history. Right. They're, they're, they're trying to figure out a way. If I'm the head coach in Nebraska... You made a great point. Everybody was talking about two to three to four years of losing one-score games. These 16 new players, that coaching staff had nothing to do with it. You know how many games they've lost, one-score games? One. So don't focus on the what. The what is they've lost a lot of close games in the last three to four years. The why, if they don't turn the ball over in the last four minutes of that ball game, they win the game. So if I'm the head coach in Nebraska, I'm not worried about rivalry right now. At some point, maybe that might be a good discussion down the road. I'm finding a way to figure out how to win that game. How do you win that game? Don't turn the ball over. You can fix turnovers. You can't go back and fix three years ago losing a close game. So I'd focus on the why, not the what. At CU, I don't know if I'm worrying about that right now. CU, all they're worried, you know, those kids didn't grow up in the 90s when they were watching national championship games. You know what CU's worried about? If I was the head coach, keeping everything compressed yeah, right now. Because right. right now, the whole country is going to be in Boulder, Colorado watching that game. We are talking about two personalities that may not be Coach any, Prime and Coach Prime Coach Rule. And, and Coach Rule, but, but the game of football, regardless of your approach, regardless of your personality, there's fundamentals that you better have, and it looks like we got two coaches that have more in common. Well, think about Coach Rule, what he's done. Temple, Baylor, turnaround. How do you do that? Culture, talent acquisition. The nation's getting to see Coach Prime. I left that practice three weeks ago, and a lot of people were asking me what I saw, and I said, I'm, getting, I'm telling you right now, that was a good football team and one of the best practices I've watched. He's implementing a culture, and he's, he's acquired some serious talent. His son's a bona fide NFL player, and I think he's got one of the top five players in America, Travis Hunter. 
that two-way athlete he has. I think he's a Heisman candidate and a high draft pick. And I can tell you firsthand, when this was a great rivalry in the 80s and the early 90s, talk about talent acquisition. Everywhere. Both Nebraska and Colorado were, were recruiting like nobody else. And I think we're about to enter a time when these two schools are going to recruit like the best in the country. And the whole country can't wait to see it. <laughs>